When you were, a, say, the age 15, mm -hmm. describe fashion at that time. Let's see, 15. That's a long time to remember, <laughs> 15. Uh, I don't know that I remember. Well, what's the most, so what time period at the earliest do you remember? Maybe 18. So describe fashion at that time. Okay. Um, they were wearing Bermuda shorts. Do you know what those are? Yes, I do. Okay. And we wore um, uh, pants called pedal pushers. Do you know what those are? No. Same thing as capris. Oh. <laughs> um, let's see. What else? Um, I. I I think I remember more about the men's fashion at that time. Describe the men's fashion to me. They were wearing peg leg pants. Do you know what those are? No. <laughs> they're, sh they're tapered at the bottom. They're real skinny and tapered. They're, they would be like skinny jeans. Oh, <laughs> so they're today's skinny jeans? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't remember exactly, but we wore bell bottoms which are the wide leg pants, and we wore hip huggers, which are the same thing the girls are wearing now with your midriff. Low riders? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. low riders, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, they wore Nehru suits. Nehru is, when the Beatles came from England, they had the no collar jackets Mm. That was very popular with the men in that day. Um, see, I think we were still wearing probably somewhere between 15 and 18 years of age. We were wearing the wide skirts and we wore hoop skirts and crinoline skirts. Really? Yes. Wow. Um, Let's see, we wore a lot of plaid. They had a madras plaid. That was a plaid from India. India? I always thought plaid came from Scotland. Well, that, this particular style was from India called madras plaid. It bled when you washed it. The colors, colors came out of it. Oh. <laughs> So would they like bleed onto each other, creating this? Didn't create anything. You just lost color out of the blouse. Oh. But you have to wash it by itself. Oh. And the crinoline slips, the hoop skirts, if you didn't have a hoop, which was kind of a plastic circle that you put in the bottom of your slip, that went under your dress, that made your dress stand out. You wore crinoline slips. They had to be starched. And that would make your dress very full. Does it starch stiffen fabric? Yes, oh. yes. But it wasn't like the spray starch. You had to cook the starch and then dip your clothing in it and then hang them out to dry. Because very few people I know we didn't have a dryer at that time, so they had to go on the clothesline. Mm. My mom was showing me some of those. <laughs> we were in Chicago, we saw some. Uh, so let's say around in your 30s, describe fashion. Uh, 30s, let's see. I think women. Uh, at that time were wearing had started to wear pants suits that was matching jacket and slacks um, prior to that women generally always wore dresses or skirts or something that showed their legs they didn't wear pants uh -oh. how did you feel about it the whole women not wearing pants thing uh, You adapt to it. I didn't know. I didn't know any other way, so there wasn't a problem with that. 
except that I worked in a field with young children and getting on the floor in a skirt was difficult. Yeah, but all of the teachers wore skirts and dresses and stockings and heels. Uh, they dressed up. So they dressed very feminine? Yes, yes. You knew the ladies from the men. Nowadays, it's kind of, there's a thin line now. Yeah, there's a thin line. And they do have now unisex clothes that either men or women can wear. Yeah, but then it was very distinct. Men, men had a style and women had a style. So describe today's style in your words. Today's style. Uh, it's kind of eclectic. It's, it's a mixture of everything. Um, there's a style for children, and then one for young adults, and then for uh, uh, the middle-aged adult, and then the older people. They all have certain styles. Um, the children, what I've noticed about children is that they're wearing more black. And when I was a kid, you did not wear black. Really? Yes. What is black? What does the color represent to you? Um, black was just a mature color. It wasn't for children. It was very sophisticated? Uh, sophisticated. It, um, a mature color. It, it, it was generally worn by older people and at uh, certain times you wore black, like to funerals, you always wore black or dark colors. So children were not associated with funerals or drab kind of things. They were, you know. Be in white. Yes, yes. So what do you believe that fashion represents? Um, I think we talked about this before. I think fashion represents fashion designers. It doesn't represent necessarily what the general population thinks because uh, fashion designers kind of go along with economics and trends and something different you know it has to be different and exciting it has to capture you however I think there's a difference between style and fashion I think that fashion pretty much predicts what you will wear because that's all they sell but you can change the fashion by your style. You can add belts or scarves or like the girls wear leggings under dresses and you know, you can do all of those kinds of things. So do you believe fashion is like the guideline but your style lets you kind of sway? You manufacture, yeah, you manufacture your style but fashion is dictated by fashion designers and fashion warehouses and whoever is making the money for designing it, for producing it. Do you think fashion is very important? I mean, fashion and or style is very important? I, I think nowadays that fashion what you choose to wear and what's fashionable is what's popular, but it doesn't always accentuate your best features. Like I've seen a lot of the young girls, I'm picking on young girls, <laughs> who wear the, um, the lowrider jeans and have their midriff exposed. Sometimes they don't always look fashionable. <laughs> Tasteful. <laughs> Tasteful, exactly. Um, 
So even though that's the fashion, everybody can't wear it. And I don't think all people realize that. They think because it's fashionable, if I've got it, I'm in fashion, you know, I'm in style. So do you, do you believe it has a negative or positive effect on this generation? It seems to have a, a positive effect. I mean, that's what everybody's doing, and, and I think the way our society is, if you're doing what everybody else is doing, you're with the in crowd. You know, you're, you're popular. Do you believe that, what do you think makes up today's styles and fashion? Do you believe that they are little pieces and bits of the past, or do you believe it's a whole new revolution? There is nothing new under the sun. It's all recycled, and it will continue to recycle. The platform shoes that they're wearing today have been worn before. The pointed toes have been worn before. The open toes in the shoe industry have all been worn before. They've changed color and they've changed the height of heels, they've changed the sole of the shoe, um, they're making them out of new material. I truly do not like the Crocs. <laughs> but I did hear a girl this morning on television that indicated a car ran over her foot, but because she had on Crocs, she didn't break her foot. Wow, so they're very durable, but yeah, I don't and think I, they them either. But. I think they have a purpose, and I think the purpose was for outdoor work in your garden and things like that. But the nurses found that they were comfortable. I don't know what the orthopedics say about the Crocs, but um, It's, it seems that everybody's wearing them, so they think they're fashionable. Do you believe the media kind of supports fashion, or do you believe it supports other things? Media is about money. And whatever brings about a large stash of money, I think that's what media goes with. So fashion, when they're our new fashions, media picks it up right away and sells it to the people and the people buy it and it's just a uh, recycling thing. So it just keeps going. Just keeps going. If we didn't have TV or magazines or newspapers, I think we would probably copy off of each other, you know, or go to the store and see what's there, but I think everybody would be wearing something different. So you believe if there wasn't the media, people would be have more of their own originality? Mm, probably. Why do you say that? Because you wouldn't know what is popular. You would set your own... Rules? Yeah, you'd set your own rules. I mean, if maybe you have a friend and they're wearing something that you like and you might go buy it but do you match i mean how many people do you influence you know do you influence for instance at school if you have on something how many other people do you think would wear it because you had it on not that many well that that's probably true of most of us you know the reason we wear what we wear is because they sell what they sell and they advertise what they advertise and uh, the cost of things also makes it uh, popular. Yeah. Oh. Well, if you can buy jeans under a hundred dollars and You can wear the jeans for more than one occasion. Like you can wear them to school. I think you can even wear, it's appropriate now that children wear jeans to church. Or 
you know, to to a dance or a party. Same way with gym shoes. You know, gym shoes were a no-no when I was growing up. You wore shoes like, to church. Oh, so but now you, you you they have gym shoes on with tuxedos. Yes. Yeah. Do you believe the things have been kind of flexible lately, like the strict rules that they had back then? Do you believe they're more flexible with them now? Yeah, I don't think there are any rules. So it's a free for all. <laughs> so, describe your fashion. Mm. My fashion. Um, it's simple. It's colorful. It's it's um, inexpensive. It usually is something I think is complementary to my skin color or my hair, or whatever. Um, uh, I have functional clothing. I can wear most of my clothes to most activities I'm going to. So you believe you dress appropriately? I think so. <laughs> I think so. So, do you have any other opinions on fashion? Anything we haven't touched bases on? Oh, I probably do, but I don't know if I can dig it all out if you have time to listen to all of it. <laughs> um, I, I know that there are men and women who choose clothing based on what they see and what they like and sometimes it is inappropriate. It might be too youthful, um, might not be the right color or style. Uh, for instance, uh, it, it was a fun time. They have activities in the park and people go casual and you know, you want to kind of stand out, but I don't know if you remember the matching shorts and shirts that men started wearing. They were the long shorts, long shorts, I think that's an oxymoron, <laughs> but the shorts that came down to the knee and it had a matching uh, shirt with a collar. Like the plaid shorts? Yeah. And, then, yes. and they had a hat. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw many men I know that were over 50 that were wearing them. And I don't think that they realize that those clothing were designed right. with the young men in mind. <laughs> so you believe people bend the rules or go to extreme? Do you believe there's such thing as conservative fashion? Very much so. Yeah. Can um, you describe it? Conservative fashion, I would say, would be probably how businessmen would dress. Um, the way I still like to see men dress when when they're going out with a, a sport coat and a tie, and um, some nice slacks. I. My idea of conservative would just mean that it is appropriate and it is uh, something that that is within um, I don't know if I can describe that. <laughs> Tristan. It's um it's appropriate it match it's Exactly. Yes, it's appropriate age and um, activity appropriate. So instead of them walking around and say, backwards hat, shades, a very vibrant t-shirt, and some really baggy pants and some shoes. <laughs> that, that I would not call conservative, and, and certainly uh, if you are conservative, that would not be something that you probably wear. 
Especially there's a certain age limit that it goes to. <laughs> like for children and young adults and some. And I didn't mean some grown men, but it's still. That can get by with it. <laughs> yes, but some cannot. Well, the, the one thing that I always say about the baggy pants and the shirts and the hats turned backwards is mm -hmm. it's just a fad. And the difference between fad and style is that it stays in for a short season. And everybody's doing it, and then it'll go away and something else will replace it. But don't you believe that that style's been going on for a while since, say, the early 90s? No, but 10 years or 20 years is not a long time. But probably this year, next year, you'll, you'll see less of it. Um, as soon as the the hype with um, this is bringing other things into the mix, but I'm saying that fashion kind of was designed after hip hoppers and and prisoners and uh, uh, other elements that weren't necessarily positive that the the young men or young women have picked up on. And I think that will become less popular as uh, people start recognizing the importance of education, the importance of working and jobs and family and those kinds of things. But nothing stays the same. Everything changes. Nothing stays the same. So do you believe that what do you think influences fashion? Besides the me besides the media, do you believe that success does, education influences or what do you think? All of those things plus um, exposure, you know, like uh, as people travel, travel about the country or um, travel out of the country. They see different styles and fashions and colors and uh, as more people come into the United States and wear different things or it would depend on what climate you lived in, you know, what you would wear. Um, I believe all of those have some influence on fashion. Do you, what, what country do you believe has the biggest influence on everything else? Europe, Europe, European countries have probably the most influence on fashion. American fashion, yeah. Because of the Paris, the Milan, mm -hmm. the Italy. Uh, I, know, I know that there are men, men that like Italian suits because they fit like a glove, or shoes that are made out of the softest leather that you feel like you're walking on a cloud, you know. They're nice luxury things. Mm -hmm. And if you've got money, you spend money. <laughs> yes, the best. So. I believe that we've touched a lot of bases and I enjoyed having this follow up with you because it really helped me understand and kind of get new material. Okay. And thank you for letting me interview you. Well, you're welcome and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I've told all my friends about it. Thank you. <laughs> so they said, how can I get involved? Um, I think you need to ask that guy. <laughs>